have the both test-driven development in Debian with Ian Jackson, Tom Marble and Stefano Zaccheroli. Hello, and way better. So, um, thanks a lot for being here. Uh, first of all, uh, if you want to help us in taking notes, please join Gobi. There is how you do that, and there is a document which already exists, which is called DC11TDDD. So, there are also already some working questions there, and if you can all together help in taking notes for this buff, that would be great. Someone is taking picture of the screen so that they can go to the document afterwards, great. <coughs> then, a uh, disclaimer. Can I? Did you take the picture? I Okay. <laughs> so then a disclaimer. So the title of this buff is sort of a misnomer because there is one development methodology which is called test-driven development, which is about first creating the test and then working a bit on the code to make the test pass. And Tom is going to say a bit more about that in a bit. But this is not only about that. So it's about two, two main topics. So both of them are related to testing. The first one is simply how we can have more testing in Debian than what we have now. And with that, I mean both per package testing, so how to uh, test individual packages more. And the second one is to also to actually have more distro-wide testing, which is something we don't have that much in Debian. So this is the first topic, how to have more testing in Debian. And the second one is actually how to properly apply test-driven methodology to Debian and whether this is something we want, whether this is something that people would like to have. Oh my. And how to do that if we really want it. I don't know if this, I oh, there we are, uh, is that even though test-driven development is a fashionable software methodology, just because we've used TDDD as our acronym du jour, that doesn't necessarily mean that all the speakers on this panel necess necessarily endorse such a methodology. Absolutely. So this is, um, so sharing ideas on these topics as we have shared them uh, in the past in Planet and see how people feel and how we can move forward on them. Thanks. So. This is a brief state of the art of the kind of testing today we do in Debian. So the first kind of testing we do in Debian is actually building packages. So everyone should build a package before uploading it, because in general we, we require deb files to exist when you do an upload. So this is the first kind of testing. Maintainers do build of packages on their own. Uh, we also do uh, rebuild, periodic rebuild, thanks to Lucas and on some uh, um, huge cluster, we periodically rebuild all the packages in the archives. So this is sort of testing that the packages can be built from sources. That might not seem much, but it's actually quite a bit. So not all distribution guarantees as we do that all the packages released are actually be able to be rebuilt from sources. So this is sort of step zero. Then we have some sort of automatic policy compliance test. So we have Lintian and we use Lintian possibly to automatically reject packages. So if Lintian says something particularly bad about your package, your package simply will not be able to enter in the archive because DAC will run Lintian and will refuse to accept your package. And then, still on the, so the, on the front of policy compliance, we have PU parts. Periodically, we run PU parts on the packages to test that they are installable in all possible weird conditions. So we, test, we try to test that way the various paths that exist to actually install and remove a package and see that the package behaves as policy required them to. Then we have some build time testing, meaning that sev several packages actually at the end of the build run specific uh, upstream, generally, test suites. And those are generally the test suites that can be run at build time, which are not necessarily the same that can be run once the package is installed. But we do have that. Several packages do that. Uh, even though we don't have, uh, so I think we don't have a specific target in the policy which is, can be invoked to actually run a build time test suite. But this is something we do, but we, I think we do not really enforce it much. So is, we can do more in encouraging that. Then we have some sort of integration testing, meaning we check if packages can be installed together. We check that uh, packages actually can uh, be installed at least in some possible way. For instance, we're using the EDOS tool that are available at EDOS Debian Net. So this is part of what we do in QA. And we, for instance, we test that we do not miss 
a conflict among packages. So we test combination of packages and we verify if they be, can be co-installed. Because if they cannot be, well, we should declare a conflict among them. So this is what we do in integration testing. And then, even if it's not, it's probably more of instance for upstream than for Debian itself, we are starting to do some automated code analysis. So some months ago, uh, Rafael Geisert announced this initiative which is called DACA for Debian automated code analysis which is essentially um, an infrastructure to be able to run code analysis tool on all the software which is available in Debian. So right now there are some simple tests like CPP check, I think, uh, like some Python specific stuff. We're trying to integrate other static analysis tool like Coccinel. And this is all to automatically find bug in the software we ship in Debian. So it has just started, but it's promising as an infrastructure. Yeah, just another word about uh -huh. that. There's some other interesting things like Olo statistics that just give you lines of code and uh, percentages for the different kinds of input files that you have. And that's actually pretty interesting stuff. Absolutely. So this is what we do today. Maybe we have forgot something. If we have forgot something, OK. Uh, microphone. Uh, I've been running two archive-wide uh, testing, uh, uh, at least uh, previously before Squeeze, I did uh, complete uh, upgrade testing, installing a GNOME desktop, a KDE desktop, and uh, I think it was a, a lot so of... So you mean upgrade testing from one suite to another? Yeah, okay. I did a squeeze, uh, landed to Squeeze upgrade testing and discovered a handful of bugs using that. I built basically a LEN installation in a change route and upgrade it and check the, uh, the results from that. Okay. Finding that discrepancy. I did it with both apt and aptitude to see if they resulted in the same packages. Uh, also, I've been running archive-wide checking of the boot sequencing, the dynamic boot sequencing. Yes, I remember that. To uh, ensure that all packages with Inscript could actually get a... Uh, uh, predictable order, ordering. Okay, so that is great. There is, um, on the Gobi, there are a lot of questions. One is, what are we doing in archive-wide testing, which we forgot to mention here? So if you can add a line with pointers to those initiatives, that would be great. Okay, so this is what we're doing now. And the question is, do we need more than this? Well, just to, I think we do. We do need more tests. In general, well, it's a bit of a rhetoric argument, but if we claim that Debian is about quality, well, it, we need more tests to keep up and guarantee that we're offering packages of high quality. And in general, if we, when we add release goals, it would be great to have a test to a way to actually test that those release goals are fulfilled. So this is, uh, in general, yes, but I think there are some more specific reasons to do that in Debian. And the first one, which I personally care about, is that we need to reduce Packaging, packaging contribution barrier. So we need to empower maintainers to actually feel more confident when they are touching packages, and in particular when they're touching packages which are not their own packages. So in particular when you're doing NMU. And I think that having more testing can actually help maintainers feeling more confident when they do changes in code which is not their own code. Uh, also, as mm, sometimes we need to test some archive-wide changes Sometimes we propose archive-wide changes which maybe on the VEL are not that well you know, um, received. And sometimes we do have a need to say, OK, I think this change is very good, even if people in theory would dis disagree. So I want to show you that the change is good. And I think it would be very nice to have more testing to actually be sure when we do this change, it's really archived that we are not breaking stuff. And this could be, I think, better used in conjunction with something like PPA, where people can change the packages of other and actually show it's, fu it's running fine and it's not breaking any existing tests and so on and so forth. So that would be sort of an extension of what Malkin was talking about this morning with an experimental archive for a whole uh, yes. a large set of changes and then test it before you actually merge. Exactly. So this can be also a, a kind of... Uh, not a test bed, but uh, an environment in which we test changes before migrating them from experimental to unstable. Exactly. So what can we do more than this? So there are a couple of directions we have been mentioning here. The first one is something that has been discussed by Lars on, uh, on Blum Planet Debian recently, is system testing. So we do not really have the sort of testing in which we test that some basic functionality, which our users ex expect to be there, actually work. For instance, we can imagine we have tasks in Debian, and 
tasks generally correspond to uh, some profile of our user. For instance, the desktop task is meant to be granted that there exists a, a desktop-based installation which the user can use to do you know, an office thing. And it would be nice to have for each task a set of tests which test basic functionalities. So examples which have been made by Lars are like, if you choose a, a server installation and you want to test that SSH is installed, that you can log in with some basic user and this kind of basic testing functionalities. So the idea is that to have some test suite which is not tied to a specific package, but rather which is system-wide and maybe associated to, uh, to Debian tasks. And I think that what we'd what would be particularly nice is actually to have a collaborative test suite in which uh, users can provide their own tests and integrate that in a Debian test suite. For instance, imagine when we have uh, upgrade report, installation report, or this kind of stuff, the users say, okay, this is not working. It would be nice to be able to add a test to a shared test suite in which we ensure that this kind of stuff will not break in the future. And of course, all this should be able to be run in, uh, automatically before doing a release. Did I forget anything? on that uh, front? Um, I don't think so. OK. Um, so this is one direction. Another one is TDD, the proper test-driven development. So maybe you want to sure. take over here? Uh, so um, for, uh, and just to maybe make this a little bit easier, um, I'll show this diagram. I realize that this is probably impossible to see, especially in the video. Uh, but the idea of test-driven development is basically this, this waterfall model, where you start with uh, writing tests and see if they pass, um, and if uh, if the uh, tests pass, you need to write more code. But really, the the core idea of TDD is that you write your tests before your code. You basically decide a priori what the functionality is by defining that in terms of a test, and you write any implementation that you can to pass the test. And then once the test is passing, now you go and refactor that code um, to make it uh, perhaps more clean or more performant. Um, but you're sure that the functionality is working as defined by the test. And so the parallel to what we're talking about here is that in the archive, we want to make, be comfortable to make archive-wide changes or perhaps packaging changes all along the lines of multi-arch and yet feel comfortable that we haven't broken anything. And so that's, that's really the parallel to test-driven development. And some, in, to, otherwise, TDD is really perhaps more of an upstream uh, concept than it would be for, for Debian. But I think that some of the principles uh, can apply here in terms of um, code quality. And I think the main thing that, that uh, Zach was talking about is giving us the confidence to make changes, even, even changes that you know, are very tricky, and know that whatever we've done will not break anything, especially as we move to something like rolling, where we want to make sure that we're always operational. Um, and actually, that could help, uh, help us evolve faster, because we will feel more comfortable in making more radical changes. OK, so and then the, another direction we would like to discuss with you is actually what is called auto package test, which I think Ian can describe way better than I could do. It is actually the, the other side of build time test suite, which is actually runtime test suite or as installed package testing. Ian? Right. So is this thing on? Seems to be. Um, so the basic idea is most packages, a lot of important packages anyway, come with some kind of upstream test suite, which is better or worse, and also sometimes we could add to that. And sometimes you run that in the build, sometimes you don't because it takes too long. Um, but often what you really wanted to do was test the .deb that you were producing, rather than just the thing that you installed. Because actually when we make mistakes, often the mistakes that we make result in the build succeeds and you end up with something and the files are in the wrong place and it doesn't ever start up or some key functionality is broken or it doesn't find its plugins or some library you use has broken and now the same binary has, doesn't work anymore even though you know, it worked before. And we don't have at the moment any way of detecting that other than when somebody tries to use it on their real system and they go, well, why does this thing not work? So I set about doing what I thought was like the smallest possible thing to make it possible to, for a package to declare how it should be tested, how its .debs should be tested. You want, so an, exa maybe, you want an example? I have yeah, some we've got an here. example here. So um, what you do is you put some so this is not notations your example. in the source package, which look a bit like that. Um, 
I don't know exactly what this is. Uh, but I'm trying I mean, to, <laughs> I'm setting up your example. Zach seems to have run it, uh, written it. No, 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 um, the idea is you put some small test control file in your source package. The bottom one is your mock testing. Right. So this is the example here. I did a sort of proof of concept with the package mock, which we all know is vitally important. <laughs> um, and it says there's a test called mock test. And well, that's the upstream test, actually. The upstream test is called mock test. And it says it needs the build tree to be rewritable. That's like a extra declaration to the test runner. And actually, that mock test is a nine-line shell script that sort of does a bit of settery and a bit of wrapping on the upstream mock test script and makes it not run the one that it's just built, it makes it run the one that's installed. And that's all you have to do to the package. And there's, well, what auto package test is, oh, is, is, there you go, that's the mock test script. Um, mostly it undoes the thing that mock tests upstream does to, um, make it run the one from the build tree, so it gets rid of the path setting, and apparently it produced some useless warning version output or something. I, this, this is years ago, I can't remember exactly what it does, but it's not very complicated. Um, so auto package test is a program that interprets this Debian tests control file and the scripts that will live alongside it, and will automatically build the package if necessary, install the resulting binaries on some kind of test bed, like a Chirut or a ZenVM or an SChirut or however what you've got, um, and report the answers via you know, a log file and the exit status. Um, now, I, that thing last worked in 2008, and the machine, I was running it, but the machine I was running it on rotted, and um, for reasons that don't need to be gone into, I didn't feel like picking it up again. Um, so, <laughs> just recently, <laughs> Stefano has been um, encouraging me to pick it up again, and I just today managed to get it working again on my laptop. Um, and In theory, on my laptop as well. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to have a demo, but I'm told I'm not allowed to have a demo if it doesn't go through the streaming video, and my laptop won't drive the streaming video, and it doesn't work on Zach's laptop at the moment. One, two? Okay. Um, while we're re reviving things, we might want to have a look at uh, Debian Test, which was a package that I wrote, I don't know, 15 years ago, and <laughs> which had uh, rsync tests because I was also maintaining rsync, and no, I don't think anybody ever picked up on that either. So uh, there were some features that are quite nice in that. that uh, so it used to test the, a specific dev in its own installation environment? Because what I think is very, you know, what I found very interesting in how to PKG test is that you, you can, for instance, have the test bed, which is a virtual machine in which you can do the testing of a packages installed. For instance, you can test an, a network server. You can set up Postgres and connect to it and do this kind of testing. Yeah, that's uh, an entirely different thing from what Debian test used to do. Which okay. Was, Debian test uh, was a framework for providing tests, which you could then say, oh, all these packages provide tests, uh, run them all. Okay. But, okay, in which environment did you use? In, so on the, your, on the, your machine? running environment. You could just okay. say Debian test all, and it okay. would, it would right. run so the one test of the, for rsync. One, one of the pieces of <laughs> auto package test that I've kind of <laughs> scooted over a bit here is there's actually, it, it's in two pieces. One of them is like a test runner program, and then there's a sort of interchangeable um, test bed control protocol where underneath you have a program that does things like revert the test bed back to what it was before. And okay, you could just use a churun, in which case, well, you don't get to revert it, and hopefully that's all right. But if you have something a bit sophisticated, I had a, a Zen setup where it would save the VM after it had booted. And then every time you wanted to run a test, it would resume the VM from exactly that point and run the test, and then it would throw the VM away. And um, so you can test I mean, you could start demons, you could wipe the file system, you could do any crazy thing you like, you could crash it, and if you crashed it, well, you know, okay, that would be counted as a test fail, yeah. and... Pot potentially, on. you can test very dangerous thing, uh, like, uh, well, the Xen, not the Zatia bootloader, but you can test a kernel, you can test right. very dangerous thing which you don't feel like right. testing on your own machine. There's, so. a, there's a way to declare, in these restrictions, you can say, breaks test bed. And if you say that, then the test runner won't run your test unless it's got a sufficiently clever virtualization thing that it's confident about that. 
Okay, sorry, uh, we've got a, another question. <coughs> yes, um, do these tests come with a package? Yes, the Is tests are in the source package. Now, you don't have to have the tests in the same source package as the binaries you intend to test, but that's probably most, that, that's the usual case and it's sort of set up to do that. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. For example, how do you do bisecting bugs if you only have the test in the latest version of a package? Right, so you can run one version of the tests against a different version of the binary package because the, the tests come out of the source package mm. and which binary package you, you run those tests against is entirely, you know, that's controlled that's control to arguments to the test runner to say, bring my binary packages from over here and use this source package. Okay, but still I'm not entirely convinced they should be coupled with a package or so, come with it so tightly. So I, so I think we should keep in mind that we are doing testing and we have a distribution. So I don't think the scenario of debugging upstream application is something which is, should be our main scenario. And if you think about only testing what is relevant for packaging, well, you might have your package in a version control system and you can do bisect in that version control system and see which distribution specific change has actually induced a, change, induced a problem. But even more, in theory, you can also do actually the bisecting on the upstream code. Imagine you have a, ver a distributed version control system for your package in which you also have an upstream branch. Well, no problem. You can do bisect there as well. So I think it's a very interesting use case, but I think it's the, the main one we should focus on. Right, so, but you, you still can do this exactly what you would want to do. You can say, I want to run the latest version of the test from the latest source package, which is the most sophisticated and best version of the test, and I want to run it against this other tree here, which is the one I'm bisecting, and it will automatically build, copy that tree onto the test bed, build it, produce the binaries, wipe the test bed, install the binaries, check that the test runs. If the test passes, you say bisect good. If the test doesn't, you say bisect bad. You go around again. Um, you just need to get all the arguments right to the runner. Okay, so I just want to mention what is the status of all this. So today, is work, how to be test is working again. Uh, just to, about. <laughs> yes, but the code has existed for like four, four years, five years, something yeah. like that. But as far as we know, it's not really in use. So it was some package in Ubuntu which using that, some well, very old there stuff. Was, there's, 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 I did one proof of concept in Ubuntu um, and um, then you know, other things intervened, and I didn't get around to adding tests to bunches of more packages. So, so as of today, in Debian, no package is actually using something like that to declare their own test, which can be interesting both to have Debian-specific tests, but also, as in the mock example, to actually, you know, make a bridge between upstream test suite and run the upstream test suite when the package is installed in a Debian-like machine. So to actually advertise a bit more this possibility, a while ago we started a, a DEP, a DEP, which is the EP8, you can find at, at that URL, to actually you know, try to standardize the interface with the testing tool and actually encourage people to use it. So if you want to know more about all this, you can have a look at DEP8. We're looking for some help to actually make it a proper specification because it's right now it's in readme state, I would say, so it was, it's pretty complete, but it might be a bit of more of introduction in material to, to know how it works. And so this is detail that you have also dis already discussed. So I think we can now open, give time, go ahead. Oh, just one more thing um, I wanted to add is this buff really was coming from uh, Stefano's decision to take some discussions that we had online and bring it into the BOF, and I want to give credit to, for, you know, where credit is due, for the other people who have been part of the discussion. Uh, as uh, Zach already mentioned, um, uh, Lars, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm sure I'm going to mess up your name, uh, was Zenius, mm -hmm. who is uh, also uh, in RC and on um contributed a lot to this discussion and has several blog posts about mm -hmm. it. Zach has a blog post about it. Um, also involved in the discussion were uh, Michael Henke and Yaroslav Halchenko. And also yes, Justin Pop. Yes. Uh, yes. So, so I want to make sure that, it, that those people have credit. And uh, with that, uh, these are the questions that we sort of thought of uh, about uh, testing in Debian. And uh, we put those up in Gabi, and perhaps there are some new ones. But let's, okay, let's so talk in about particular, it. so the, the general question I think for the, for the public is how can we do, how can we improve? Package testing in De both package testing in Debian and distribution-wide testing in Debian. So this is kind of the the main topic, and I guess 
any of us a specific question which is more interested so personally for all the, th the thing which regards how to package test I'm curious about what are your, your experience so do you have packages in which you have build time test suite and if yes are you run are you running them do you have packages which are runtime suite which are particularly difficult to run in particular, the cases which are interesting are those in which you cannot run an upstream test suite because it's dangerous, because it needs network, which is something we don't have in build these, and all this kind of stuff, because those scenarios are those in which we can benefit the most for something like auto PKG test. And other topics we would like to, to air your opinion on are is, so um, do you know initiative for package testing in Debian that we, didn't, we did not mention, like the one that Perry brought up? as well as would it be useful for us in Debian to actually offer Debian as a platform for upstream testing? For instance, one simple example comes to my mind is that we have way more architecture than the average upstream. So we can imagine offering Debian as a platform in which we run upstream test suite in a, a huge variety of architecture and actually give a service to upstream as well. And finally, for a specific case of system testing, how can we set up some collaborative mechanism in which we collect tests for our, from our users and you know, we bring them together and ensure they work release after release? So please. Hello. Um, I think I have kind of a special case of testing because I'm uh, considering scientific software and if you have some, say, some input data and the command line what to do and you have some expected output data and want to compare it. And I would like to have a test when package is built, so in, in the, inside the package build process to, to really verify that the, the program works. It is also planned to do this? That, I, I mean, that's up to you in your package, right? It's very easy. All you need to do is yeah, I, build I, I, target, run the test. I, I can put it in the rules file, sure. Yeah, but put we it can in the, some, somehow formalize this. Um, in, in my opinion, say DH run testbed or something. Well, okay. how, would, how would DH know what there, to there do? There is. What so, actually, the, in DH7, I, I found it out the other day. I was, Joy in the room can kill me probably if he's okay, <laughs> not. So, there is a DH auto test common in DH7, which is automatically run. And what it does, it checks if your make file has a test. Target. Make, if check, make target. check target. Make check. I think it tests both, mm. check and test. But mm. okay, there is some heuristic to find out whether the make file have a check thingy. So by default, mm. if you respect the this if you respect some let's say legacy naming convention, mm. the DH seven and already does that. Okay. So that should work out of the box. The problem is that one part of the problem is that we are not encouraging people enough to actually use that. Because, for instance, there is, to the best of my knowledge, no Lincoln warning, which, for instance, check if there is some non-standard test target and say, okay, beware, you are not running that test target. And also, I don't think we have a policy target, which is sort of mandatory to actually test the package. So these are the two um, directions in which I think we can improve. But by default, DH should already do the right thing, which is pretty good. So, excuse me, Niels, you got the note about a new Lintian warning? Okay. You will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think there were, okay. Neil, uh, Neil Williams then, okay. Okay, so, do you want to start? Okay. So, uh, in two packages, I have upstream uh, test suites. One is LibABI driver, the other one is uh, Nova Compute for OpenStack. And uh, I run both them in my build target, but I found very, very important to be able to say, okay, now I'm, I'm just modifying my package and I don't want to build it, to, build, to, to run the, the test suit because it takes too much time. So it would, it's good to have it to run by default, but it's also very good to be able to say, this time I don't want to run it. And then so I Oh, okay, one at a time, I don't know. <laughs> I think there was Neil first, and then we go around. Well, I mean, we, we need an answer to this, yeah, this, is this point, right? Well, um, and I don't have an answer, but there should be yeah, there is, there a standard way for you to ask, for example, that DH... There, yeah, there, there, is there is should a, there be a, way, a standard, a standard way, way for you to tell DH yeah. not to the, run the test. This is what I was going to say. I the, think there is a, a standard way of doing that with the dev build options. You've got to make sure that... 
uh, if you are going to run tests, you use the deb build option for something like no check or no tests, um, and you enable that in your Debian rules file. And as long as you're then, you, know, you can then specify the deb build option to not run the test for that particular operation. But it's, that's particularly important when we're talking about we just had multi arch, so then we're cross compiling. You've got to make sure if you're doing tests during the build, you've got to have a way of, of allowing that to be disabled. All right, because point. when you're right, all uh, kinds of situations. This should be will this should be that. in the this should be in the policy. Manual, Actually, right? no, no, no. Is check, that what you're saying? No, che no check. It is the no check option. It is in the policy. I have yeah. no idea how much it is encouraged or enforced oh, or I anything else. This, but what? It would be, nice be worth check, looking yeah. at policy to check yeah. that policy says what we think it should, which is probably you should probably run the upstream test suite unless there's some really good reason not to, and you should respect the no check the yeah. build option. The other thing I was thinking of, um, one of the very hard things to test is things like grub. Because like come what? Grub. Grub and bootloaders. Because come release time, we get so many uh, RC bugs against bootloaders and problems like that, and they are so hard to test. How do we deal with that kind of situation? What, what is the framework for dealing with um, uh, big issues like that where the system is, is so disabled if you actually get it wrong. Right, so the, 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 the sensible way to deal with that is to test a boot, you can only really test bootloaders properly in a VM. So you need machinery that will in, you know, install your system in the VM and install the new bootloader and then check whether the VM still boots. Um, that's in principle possible, but uh, you know, I can say it's a simple matter of coding, but nobody's written it yet. There are a couple it's probably not that simple. Uh, I have a few questions uh, relaying from IRC. Uh, the first one is, uh, if, uh, do you happen to know if there are any packages in the uh, archive uh, which implemented the uh, DEP8 spec? Or no, Stefano, okay. that's what Stefano was just saying earlier. Oh. Sorry. There there so there is a mock from Ubuntu like uh, five years ago. There's a five-year-old mock package in Ubuntu. <laughs> but if you went back to a five-year-old Ubuntu, there would be in Ubuntu. But I think they've dropped that change now. Okay. So part of all this is actually, you know, try to popularizing it and, yep. Do, uh, you had another one? Yeah, yeah, then I will give it to others. Uh, the next question is uh, regarding build time testing. Uh, what would be the current take? Uh, how much time, for example, on a conventional laptop, uh, is it okay to allow tests to run during build time? I have no idea. <laughs> I would so say that a rule of thumb, you should compare it to how long your package takes to build anyway. And if it, the tests start to take a, a good deal longer than the rest of the build, then, then you're really adding a big extra cost, and you should think about whether that's sensible. But, but a, a, any build maintainer in the room? If, okay. So that might be interesting to know what they consider acceptable and what do we, they do not consider acceptable. That's an interesting uh, figure. Can we use the, excuse me, the dev option no check for that if it's really long, just turn it off? Well, except that there would, the, the, you could turn that on on the build Ds, but you don't want to, and the, there's no way for the build D to tell that this particular package is going to spend three days running a, a test on RML. So <laughs> what you want is some way for the package to, and the, to know that the test is going to take ages on this particular host or something. This is all getting too complicated. The best answer is if that's going to happen to your package, just don't, don't turn it on. Um, okay. Um, have you thought about what should happen when a test fails? Is it always that building the package should fail. What if it's not a build test? What if it's a test run on some okay. user's computer? Right. So um, this, this is interesting. Yeah, right. So I, I've got fine. the answer to this. Um, I think that this information should be on your package's QA page. Um, you know, the, the results of the last test run should be on your QA page with a nice little color to say whether it's right or wrong. And at the moment, there is no code that will take the output from auto package test and present it any reasonable way. What it does at the moment is it emails somebody with, uh, you know, a pass or a fail, particularly it emails you with logs of failed things. And it's, 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 it's really not a very useful thing for it to be doing, but I haven't had time to write 
kind of like a web front end, and I'm already good at that kind of thing anyway. So, so. part of the idea to resurrecting all this after having the code working and after having some stable spec is actually indeed having some infrastructure which periodically run the tests on all the archive, potentially on different architectures, but that start to be a bit uh, resource consuming, and then do what we usually do for QA stuff. So periodic runs, publishing the data, and integrating them, for instance, in the PTS, and then after human review, periodically some can go, can go ahead and file the bugs. This is exactly what happens with the periodic builds that Lucas does, for, for instance. So I think it might be useful to be able to specify something like this test is critical. If this fails, then, then uh, it's a really critical bug or something because all tests are not cre created equal. If some upstream GCC small test case fails, that's probably not that critical, but if if a bug removes all your files, then it's bad. Right. So Good luck the, with the, that. the 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 auto packages test declaration syntax is it, you see it's an you know RFC eighty two file. It would be perfectly easy to add you know, to extend that syntax to do that, but given at the moment there's no really reporting infrastructure at all anyway. Um, there's also a bit of a problem with automatic bug reporting. Um, if you have a lot of tests that say, well, if this test fails, then the package is definitely broken and you should automatically immediately file a bug, then if the libc breaks, suddenly every maintainer of any package will get a bug report saying, your package no longer works. <laughs> because the tester will install the system, try to run the test, discover the test doesn't fail, and decide to automatically file a bug. And at the moment, we don't really have a, a good answer to that problem. I think, just a second before Phil, that the PU parts people have uh, approached this problem by doing a test following the dependency tree. So they first test the uh, some you know uh, package which are up in the root of the dependency tree, and if that fails, they do not test what's below. So Olga is not here, but they think they're doing something like that, which can mitigate the problem. That, that would be a useful thing to do. Phil? Uh, one way of selecting what to test for, of course, is to test anything that causes a bug. And that tells you straight away whether it was a release critical test or not, because if the bug was release critical that you're testing for, then you make that a release critical, critical test. Uh, so, no, I'm I mean, not sure I got so, that. Well, every time someone reports a bug against your package, it's not a bad idea if we had such a framework to write a matching test that fails before you fix it and succeeds after you fix it. And then if that's a really critical bug that you were just fixing, then it's a release critical test. Right. That right sort of pretty much by definition. Also, if, uh, if these tests are things that you could encourage people to run on their systems, as, apart from the ones that trash the... Uh, <laughs> so yeah. you, it would be nice to have a, a, a program that would call the, the safe tests. Right, yeah, on, ADT, on run will, ADT run will do that if you give it the right options. Um, and at that the moment, can be integrated the, into report bug as well. Um, well, I mean, I, I imagine that ideally you would do this during uploading. Uh, you know, at the moment, the sort Absolutely. of glue isn't quite there. Absolutely, if someone's reporting a bug you know, against your package. I think pbuilder should probably be, you know, or dbuild should be changed to have an option, say, oh, and run the test. You're using a chiroot anyway, run the test. If the, uh, you know, run the safe tests in the chiroot and see if it... Absolutely, but yeah. if, you're a, if you're a committed user, you might just have, decide to run a test every now and again on all the packages that have got tests. And if you're reporting a bug, if you run all the tests available for that package and a load of them fail, then maybe you've broken your system rather than it being a bug in the package. Or there is that, yeah. There's a question there. So now that you mentioned PU parts and uh, maybe Lintian, back to Sami's question about uh, do the tests need to be in the source package? Uh, for example, if I want to test all Emacs packages, and I want to test that uh, they should do something when you install and Emacs is not installed, and something else if you install Emacs, would I need to then put these tests to some Emacs and common package and declare dependency on every single package in the archive, e e e Emacs package in the archive, or how would you do that? Or do I just right. put with, them with to some Git repository and uh, make some manual hack to... So what you could do is... So auto package doesn't require that the packages you're testing are in the same, come from the same source package as the one containing the tests. That's just the easy default. Yeah. Um, 
If what you want to do is run a test on some particular package, both before and after you install, well, the, you know, the, well, the, well, the problem the interest, is uh, that uh, Lintian, Lintian uh, doesn't. You cannot use uh, Lintian to check the maintainer scripts because they are not run because it's real time or or, or static. And uh, with PU parts, that you cannot do much logic there. It just checks that you can install and remove it, but you cannot say that. Yeah, I think I don't so think I auto package test could do this at the moment, but it wouldn't be very hard to add a feature that would make it possible to do that. Can, and can and you, you would end up you'd end up writing a, a source package whose sole purpose was to contain the tests, or maybe you would put it in an Emacs common package if if it was convenient. And you certainly wouldn't want to make a thing that said, well, we depend on everything in the archive. You wouldn't want to list all the packages that you were testing. But there is a question there about how you would decide which packages you ought to run the test on. Well, um, every time somebody uploads a new version of an Emacs add-on, right. then uh, the test you, should, should be you run. You know, and I know what an Emacs add-on is, but some, you know, in order to do that automatically, there will have to be some code that automatically yes. decides which yeah. packages in the archive are an Emacs add-on and run this test only on them. And well, the policy may or may requires then you uh, you need to depend on an Emacs and packet. So you, you just check if that's in the dependency. Yeah, right. So then that test test is applicable. So the right way to do that with auto package test would be to have some kind of, you know, the driver script yes. would, would yes. select. A package to test. Um, I'm not sure. You know, so this maybe, is a maybe, maybe I'll, thing to do. I'll write the test, put it to a Git repository, and uh, run it against a few packages and send it to you, and then you can think about it. Okay, can we move on? There is a question from Paul in the, bottom, in the back. So in 3.0 uh, Quilt, you can have multiple source tuples. And so you can put the tests in one source tuple. And um, I already do a very similar thing for another package where I have the main package, but alter, um, varying amounts of, say, beta test material in separate source packages. And I can selectively change how many of those source packages I include. But the base package stays identical, the base tuple. So yes, you can put tests in a separate table, and I think it's generally great if for tests that comes from Debian. So, or maybe I didn't get your question. I was just sort of saying it would be possible to standardize that route by having a one one particular a naming convention, a, a naming like format for the test table. So you know, instead of you know dash tests or something, Debian dash tests. So yes, it would be possible, but I don't think it would be desirable because imposing to have separate tarball if you want to to have tests is kind of I think it's right. Too I much. mean, if you look at Orc, Mork, it would have a tarball containing a two-line file and a nine-line file, and that's a bit silly. So, uh, really, what you wanted was just to dump it in the diff like with everything else. If you have some upstream package that's got an enormous test suite. With, with giant data files in it that comes distributed separately upstream, then you would want the separate table. I, I think it might be worthwhile considering a naming convention for tests that span multiple implementations. We sort of touched on that a little bit. You know, in the case of ARC, there's MARC and NARC and GARC and so on. In the case of Java, we have multiple Java implementations, but the test suite is largely the same. So uh, there may be some refactoring to do. So I think we have like one minute left. Any other comment? Uh, uh, just a comment from IRC. Uh, Liv said he has a few tools. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Well, actually, prototypes. Thanks. Uh, I forgot to mention that, thanks. Testing uh, things like bootloaders and uh, X applications. Um, if you look at his blog, uh, there will be links to it. So, yes, like Lars has a, um, a, a sort of Python library called SysTest that can right. be used to write system level testing. And I think it would be a very interesting tool to use as a basis to create a collaborative test suite for testing tasks and basic Debian installation. So, yes, that would be very interesting. OK, so to conclude, if you're interested in all this, in particular in L2PKG test and reviving it, 
feel free to contact me. There are plenty of tasks to be worked on, so you can be of help so if you're interested in these topics. So I think maybe we should talk a little bit about follow-up. Uh, should we do a, maybe a page in the wiki, uh, or should we send email to a Dash project? What do you so think? I would send those minutes to DevConf Discuss, and I think on project as well. Okay. And yes, why not? We can announce a page when we have one with pointers to this stuff. Good idea. Okay, and so we see there are a lot of people in Gabi, and I'm sure there's a bunch in IRC, uh, and everyone here, thank you very much. Thanks a lot.